wanted to show you here was this lovely example of a coyote brush, uh, Bacchorus pilularis. This is a uh, native plant that is one of the uh, first ones to colonize an area that's been disturbed. So imagine a field that's been uh, plowed or um, uh, burned or something like that uh, and used uh, uh, by people or roadsides. You'll often see coyote bush being one of the first uh, plants that moves into an area, uh, early successional plant basically. What's really cool about coyote bush is that ultimately, especially when they get to be this large, you'll end up with uh, birds perching in it and they will often spread other seed from other plants. So it's been observed by uh, a lot of people that an area will fill in with coyote bush and then around that you'll see other native shrubs move in as well. Um, as an example of uh, how this plant colonizes an area, it's actually one of the plants that's moving in on the hillside here above Scorpion uh, now that the sheep have been removed. Kind of a close-up look at coyote bush here. Uh, they have very small leaves. In fact, the largest leaf on this plant right here is this right here and it's less than an inch long and you'll often see the coyote bush leaves illustrated like this. Um, many of the other leaves are even smaller but they're um, relatively hard to the touch and um, they're kind of tooth if you want to say that. Maybe a little bit dentate. Um, kind of jaggedy edges would be another way of putting it. This plant, particular one, is not in bloom right now, but when they are in bloom, you'll see um, basically a uh, fuzzy substance, kind of like a dandelion seed. As a matter of fact, coyote bush is in the sunflower family, so it's actually related to dandelions. There aren't any big flowers on this. You're not going to see a big yellow dandelion-like flower, but what you will see is the uh, basically the what's called the pappus, the chaff that helps bear the seeds on the wind. So it'll have that white uh, feathery like substance that you'll see on dandelions.